Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to describe how to configure Cisco router using a static NAT. So first let me describe the network that I have at hand, or the simulated network of course. I have two internal wired networks. So the first network has this prefix 192.168.0.0/24 and the second network comes from prefix 192.168.1.0/24. These two networks are internal networks. They are using private IP addresses. Now, if they want to communicate with the outside world or let's say external networks which use public IP addresses, all the packets which are generated from these internal networks should need to have their source IP address translated into a global IP address or a public IP address. So, in one side, we have the inside local IP addresses. Those IP addresses that belong to internal networks. On the other side, we have inside global IP addresses, those IP addresses which into which the private IP address will be translated and which are going to allow the packet to move to the uh, internet side. Uh, this router is the router that's going to perform the translation. That's why I named here NAT, just for the purpose of readability. Now, these two router, this two uh, this router here has two interfaces. The first interface is, is serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. This interface is connected to the inside network or internal network. This interface, serial 0 slash 0 slash 1, is connected to outside network. So for configuring the static NAT, we have to access the router and configure the router with the uh, appropriately according to what we have at hand. So first, I will start with configuring by configuring a router like this. I tell I will go to the config to the config line to the command line interface and go to the privileged mode. From the privileged mode, move to the global configuration mode. Then I will enter the serial zero slash zero slash zero, and I configure the router to consider this interface as the inside interface or the interface connected to the internal network. On the other side, I'm going to also access the serial 0 slash 0 slash 1, the second interface that I'm using here, this one, and configure the router to consider this interface as the outside interface, or the interface which is connected to the outside or external networks. Now, with a static netting, every internal IP address needs to be translated into a global or inside global IP address. These are our internal IP addresses, and it's obvious that these IP addresses are, um, are private IP addresses. We need to convert or translate them into an uh, inside global IP address. Uh, here the prefix is 196.15.60.0. So I'm going, to do, I'm going to start doing this configuration. Uh, well, let me just show you the uh, IP address that I'm going to translate. First, I need to go back to the global configuration mode and say IP inside source. So here I'm configuring the source IP address from the packet which are generated on the inside network in their way to the outside network. So the command is IP NAT inside source. Then I type here the internal IP address. Uh, no, sorry. First, I need to specify static. Just to mention that this is a static NAT rule, and then I will type 196.192.168.0.1 will be translated into 196.15.60.1, right? This is the, uh, the global prefix, the prefix that I'm using for inside global IP addresses. I'm going to come to, to translate, to write second rule or enter the second NAT rule to, to uh, to translate the second private IP address into 196.15.60.2. This will be my third NAT rule that I will be translating, where I'll be translating IP address 192.168.0.3 into 196.15.60.3. And finally, the last rule that I'll be using, that I'll be entering here, to translate the, well, actually, well, I need to remove this uh, small, this is a small mistake actually, I don't have this internal IP address, 
the IP address that should come here should be 1.1. Uh, .1. .1. .1. Sorry for that. Now the last rule will be 1.2. 192.168.1.2, .2, which needs to be translated into 196.15.60.4. After I finish that, let me go back to the running configuration and, and check my NAT rules. So these are the inside local IP addresses that will be, and these are the inside global IP addresses. These are the IP addresses into which they are going to be translated. These are the, uh, the inside local IP addresses of, of the second LAN, and these are the inside global IP addresses into which they are going to be translated. So far, so good. So all uh, NAT rules have been entered. Now we have to come here on this router, outside router, so all the packets which are generated from the internal network, when they reach NAT, will be translated. Their source IP address will be translated into inside global IP address whose prefix is 196.15.60.0. Now we have to configure the outside router to uh, with a with a routing table with a, with a routing entry such that he knows how to reply or to send back reply packet to the internal network. So I'm accessing the outside router and I go to the command line interface, enable global configuration mode and from here I'm going to enter this static route which says that, uh, which shows how to reach all destinations, destination with network address 196.15.60.0 and subnet mask 255, 255, 255, 0. Of course, this should be forwarded through this uh, interface, which is a uh, serial.0.0 slash 1. So I'm going to write the interface name here, 0 slash 0 slash 1. Here it is. Now what we do, we go for testing. We're going to test check if everything works fine. Now I am on PC0 and I need to access the web server or the FTP server. Let's try that. I'm going to call PC0. Go to the desktop, start the web browser. From the web browser, I'm going to write the IP address of the web server, 192.168. Uh, sorry, the web server is 212.0.0.1. Well, here it is, it works. Okay, so from PC0, I was able to access the web server. So connectivity is there. Uh, I can try the second thing from the PC1. I will try to access um, FTP. So for this I'm going to type FTP command followed by the IP address of the FTP server. Well, you see, I have to type username Cisco, the password, and see what is there. Alright, so it lists all the files available on the FTP server. Uh, so nothing is, is working fine. I will try the second network, wired LAN, on this also I'm going to start the browser and type the IP address of the web server. It works fine, it's okay. And I go to the second host of the second network and start the command prompt. Type the command FTP and specify the IP address of the FTP server. So this is the username. I type the password and list the directory of the files available in the FTP server. So everything is here, everything is okay. Now, just for the sake of being sure that everything works fine, I go to NAT router and type the command show NAT translation. Okay, these are all the translations. So, here on this, on this column, the first column shows the protocol in use. The second column will show the inside global IP address. These are the public or global IP addresses. The third column indicates the inside local IP addresses. For the outside local and outside global, we will not care about them for now. So for the inside local, we'll see that all the private IP addresses of the four hosts that we see here are translated into these inside global IP addresses as configured using the NAT rules. But also we notice that uh, for all our communication to the outside hosts, for example, outside servers like 212.0.0.1 or 212.1.1.1, either for the web uh, server or FTP server as pointed here by the port number, we see that the translation has been achieved on the router side. So the router received the packet from source 192.168.0.1 and translated into 
global address inside inside global address 196.15.60.1 using TCP protocol at the transport layer and uh, the computer uh, the, this internal host was able to communicate with the web server uh, the same story with the FTP server and the same thing can be said about host on the second wired network so everything works fine so far by displaying when displaying the NAT translation table. We can also do something which consists of, for example, debug. I debug, I type debug IP NAT. Now, each time a host, for example, from PC1, I will try to access the web server on 212.0.0.1, right? Let me just go back to NAT router and see what happens. Yes, these are the translations which are uh, displayed. So. Uh, the router will receive a packet from this source IP address 192.168.0.2 It will be translated into this IP, this IP address 196.15.60.2 And this packet is aimed to destination 212.0.0.1 And then a reply packet will come from this source IP address, which is actually the previous destination And this packet is targeted, is aimed to this IP address 196.15.60.2 In fact, it is the inside global IP address into which a private IP address has been translated So by consulting its NAT translation table, the router knows exactly that this is an inside global IP address And it, he needs to find, it needs to find the inside local IP address related to it through the NAT table And it is 192.168.0.2 And here it is the NAT translation is performing uh, very well on the NAT router. It should be pointed that static NAT is used in some specific situation that I'm going to show you some of the scenarios, one or two scenarios at the end. However, static NAT is not a scalable solution actually if you want to uh, translate your internal IP addresses into public or external networks because in, assume that in your company you have hundreds of computers so of course each computer needs to have an IP address or internal a private IP address if you rely on static NAT you need to have also the same number of global or public IP addresses which is really difficult it defies the reason why NAT has been uh, developed this was to uh, slow down the, the uh, deprecation of IPv4 address space or the reduction of IPv4 address space so static NAT can be used in some situations but it cannot be viewed as a really scalable solution in the case where you have large number of internal hosts thank you for viewing this video see you in my next video about dynamic NAT configuration thank you